Well, it should at least cut dirt. And that's what we need it for. Because today, our work on Rotorooter continues. Last week, we built a wooden berm after the Kevin jump. And despite my doubts, you can freaking torch this thing. So much so that the following turn needs a berm too. Now, this new berm won't need to be perfect. It just needs to be better than a flat turn. So we'll build it out of dirt and follow the natural slope of the land. But we won't have much time to do it, as usual. Step one is to use our newly sharpened rogue hoe to cut away the top layer. The loam here on Berm Peak has the consistency of shag carpet and is composed mostly of tiny roots. This is why we leave it in place wherever possible, as it holds up in pretty much all weather conditions. But when building a berm, we're after the clay beneath. Just as its name implies, clay can be shaped into just about anything. But once you get to it, you'll find a mixture of rocks, roots, rotted stumps, and other stuff we'll want to rake out before shaping. But before we rake anything, all this clay needs to get broken and churned up, and we don't have time for all that. You've got an engine, you got tines, which are like these little blades, and then you got a couple wheels in the back. We can use this to break up the soil, and then we can just rake it into the place we want and pack it down. The tiller is our one and only machine, a really small machine. As we learned on Airbag Trail, the tiller doesn't work so well on loam, as all the roots get tangled up in the tines. That's why we're only firing it up now that all the loam has been removed. Yeah, I might be out of gas. With the clay now tilled, it's consistent enough to rake into the shape of a berm. As we shape it, the clay needs to be packed down. And in my experience, that takes a few days, as the soil needs time to dry out and harden. I wonder if there's any place I can rent a plate compactor. It's just gonna start raining again. Seems like short notice. Seems like short notice and United, United is closed. I think I'm actually gonna look. If I could get over to Home Depot in Asheville tonight, I think they're open till nine. If I come home with a plate tamp, I think we could have, have this thing done in pretty short order. We still have something else to build before the rain moves in, so I brought in some help to speed things up. Almost 200 pounds worth of help. We used the plate tamp on the gravel road project, and I was able to use it to compact a landing in mere minutes. Despite its weight, the plate tamp isn't so hard to move around since it propels itself forwards using vibration. With this thing on deck, we should have a rideable berm in a few minutes. All right, so I just figured something out. This sucks. <laughs> the Whacker Packer doesn't work so well on wet clay. And actually, it's counterproductive. But Kevin and I discovered a little trick to compacting this wet stuff. I don't know what this crushed rocky mix is called, but whoever built this house dumped tons of it in the back. We call it Gray Pow. If I can mine enough of it off this forest road, it'll make a nice top layer that won't stick to shovels or the tamp. And since our mine is pretty close to the berm, this task shouldn't set us back very long. Now to give the Whacker Packer another run.
that time, it worked. Far from perfectly, but enough to get this berm semi-running today. But it's time to wrap things up because we don't have much time left, and I'm planning on building something else. I would love to keep working on this berm and make it perfect, but we're gonna have to do that another day and just ride it as is, because we're losing light. After this berm is that log hop into the steep section, and I want to use the speed from the berm for a little feature before it. This will be a great opportunity to use some of this wood, and a bit of scrap plank not long enough for other projects. We're building a miniature version of a much larger feature you'll see at bike parks and slope style courses everywhere. I'm calling it the pecker log, and we've got approximately no time to build it if we want to ride this line before the rain. As you can see, the pecker log is simply a planked out log, proudly protruding from the earth. And it didn't take us very long to get running. And we have just enough time to give this line a test. going to need some work, but we have a good starting point now. And as for the pecker log... Oh, oh look, I'm just going to roll this. Ooh, dude, how did... Uh, I just skidded off of that thing and hit straight into this log. Of course, my GoPro wasn't running when I finally realized there's something very wrong with this feature. Oh, it's moving. It's actually been a long time since I crashed, but having it happen due to shoddy workmanship is just a kick to the... Well, we need to fix it. This is always what happens when we rush things, or when I rush things. Because I get hurt. It turned out that I would have had time to build this right in the first place. It only took 15 minutes to brace solid, and that wasn't worth careening into the woods over. This pattern of trying to beat the rain has gotten me into trouble before, and it looks like I may never learn. But now we have a pretty fun line, and it's fast. Really fast. Did I mention I love my hardtail? We've got the roll-in, the berm, the Kevin jump, the wood berm, the soft unfinished berm, and the little pecker log. But we need to get this all dialed before moving on to the icing on the cake, the big feature we have planned for the beginning. The goal? Have that thing finished right before the official start of spring. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.